Never fear on missing out by clicking that subscribe button and becoming another member of the Babylonian family. Good day to you Babylonians, my name is Songs of Rays and we're back with a different kind of video today after all the legendary weapon guides have all been finished. We're now going to do some ranking of some tier lists to be able to give you an idea as to what to aim for as a legendary gun and we're going to combine the mods and the guns together to give you an idea and um, we're going to put it into a tier list obviously as you can see with the five categories we've got god tier we've got ct 13 to 15 worthy so you can definitely still get some work done we've got early to mid end game viable so that was when it comes to the expeditions we think i think potentially that could get you up to like ct 12 but then obviously you're going to need some better stuff after that uh, we've got avoid no synergy with class whatsoever so these are the legendaries that just put straight in your stash these will be for other classes and then we've got utility mods and guns so I feel like that there's a couple of mods that are out there that while they don't do extra damage for you they do actually have um, something else that can they can offer to you so I'm like protection for example um, and then Obviously, you, if, you, if you are struggling for some of these tier 3 mods as they go higher up the tier list, you can then use some of these just to be able to give you a little bit more survivability to get yourself through endgame and take it from there. So, as you can see, we've got all the thumbnails from every single one of the 46 weapon guides that we've done as a channel, and we're going to just put them into order for a Firepower Blighted Rounds Technomancer build. Uh, and as we progress through the series, we'll be able to do all different classes. So I'm going to start with Technomancer, we're going to go Firepower and then Anomaly. Uh, I might even throw in a uh, Freeze one as well because there is three builds that are viable for a Technomancer. Uh, and then go for Devastator, uh, Trickster and Pyromancer. And then just give you an idea as a reference so you can always just come back to this video go right I've got a legendary where does this fit into it and then you can just pick it up from there so first off we have the absolute zero legendary assault rifle now this one has the tier 3 mod to be able to inflict freeze on enemies every single second um, and I do think as a firepower technomancer you if your build is correct then you should potentially have a use for this and the freeze that's on this gun um, as you go through like some of the, the tier 3 armor mods you do in well, additional 25% to free of frozen enemies uh, there's a tier 2 mod that does an additional 15% and because you're using cold snap as your utility skill to be able to just freeze everyone nearby and if you go into kind of a borealis kind of build then you'll be doing that extra damage to freeze and it is actually kind of worthwhile so as, as a gun itself it's kind of solid I did use this as my backup for a while uh, just so I can freeze enemies by myself a little bit of time just in case I ever needed to re reload on my uh, blighted rounds so um, I would say it's not necessarily god tier um, just because I don't think it packs the punch that it's needed to be able to uh, just carry pretty much everyone through anything um, it's not a utility well it is kind of a utility mod but I think it's better than that um, I think the the mod itself actually does have a use, so it definitely doesn't go here. Um, it definitely has synergy with the class, so it definitely is above there. Early to mid, I'd, I'd say it's possibly in between... It's got to be CT 13 to 15 worthy, I think, um, just for the mod by itself. So I would keep that there, um, and if you definitely pick one of these up and it's one of the few legendaries that you get as a Technomancer, you definitely cannot go wrong with this. Now the Airy Master is a bit of a strange one because when I was doing the testing um, with the Blighted Rounds on, it seemed to be pretty strong. Now obviously that's that part that will be down to my build and the other part will be down to how actually strong the gun actually is. Um, but as a Technomancer you shouldn't be going for any kind of shotguns um, just at all. Now obviously I understand there's like Death Shields and there's Funeral Pyres and all those kind of things um, which are pretty good. Uh, and they're pretty good weapons in their own right and obviously there are builds that can go around that but as, as a whole because you're specialized in long-range damage you shouldn't be using shotguns so I can't recommend this to be able to go uh, for the top two I just can't do that um, the mod itself is pretty decent um, it does take up um, some mobs and some enemies and float them in the air for five seconds and you can refresh that onto quite a lot of other enemies and it does affect elites as well which is definitely quite handy um, as such, 
because it's not really it doesn't synergize with the class I think I might have to put this as a utility mod um, it is a great way to be able to stop damage coming to yourself especially when you don't aim down sights and you just do it fire it as if it's hip fire um, and you hit as many enemies as possible you then float them into the air um, and then you can finish them off with some kind of blighted rounds this will be a great way to stall if you are waiting for your rounds to be able to recharge so I do feel like in that sense it's a utility mod as for the Amber Vault, this instantly goes god tier. Um, there, there's no denying, there's no, and everyone knows about Killing Spree, about how good the good of a mod it is, um, how effective it is, and the gun itself is not bad as well. Um, unfortunately, I do wish it had a little bit more damage, because like the uh, tactical burst rifles that are in this game, uh, they start off with a high damage, um, which normally is around about double what a double gun can actually put out because of it being fully automatic so the mod itself instant god tier the gun itself is definitely high tier I think together um, definitely god tier in terms of weapon you definitely cannot go wrong with an amber vault if you ever do find one give it a go give it a try if you find that the gun itself just isn't packing the punch and you do find something better you dismantle it you take killing spree you plop that onto the next gun that you've got and all of a sudden you're just wrecking house with this especially as a uh, firepower build um, and going for the blighted rounds and the additional damage you're doing you should have no problems whatsoever being able to melt everything that's in front of you so the anomaly effigy is the latest gun that we've done this was the last in the actual gun series that we did um, and we found that the while the gun itself is kind of strong but unfortunately being a shotgun does not really synergize with the class but that being said the mod itself has huge potential and I do feel like this will be a great way to uh, do kind of like area of effect damage as a technomancer and that's outside of your cold snap so think of it as kind of like a mini cold snap in that sense it just doesn't freeze anyone in place but it would be great for firing this into an area where there is a spawn location for mobs so Kemplant has a, has quite a few of those um, normally well there's a couple at the start there's a couple in the next room and the one before the just the elevator it's great um, and in fact actually the end room of that and Kemplant as well so this could be a good mod um, I am yet to get this gun I'm yet to give this a go um, but I do think the mod would carry this because like I said the shotguns really do not have any kind of synergy um, As such I feel like putting it in a utility mod would be a disservice because the gun is still kind of decent um, No, it's got to go into utility unfortunately the, the gun literally has no viability as a technomancer You shouldn't really not be using any kind of shotguns because you're not benefiting from that extra damage so yeah, it, it's, 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 it's a great mod, um, but the gun unfortunately holds it back, and as such I'm just going to combine the two, and we're just going to leave it as a utility mod, so it's just the mod that's great. Uh, as for the Blight Bearer, uh, this one inflicts Toxic, which is great as a Technomancer. Uh, unfortunately, your Blighted Rounds also do that by themselves, so this necessarily isn't a great gun to use your Blighted Rounds on, but it does increase the damage even further, so it's kind of a swings and roundabouts kind of moment there. Um, also because it's a single shot rifle um, you also do have the fact that so, some people don't like the idea of not having a full auto gun or a, or a uh, burst fire uh, and it does have a lower magazine as well so a couple of things combine it just to hold it back a little bit but the high damage and the high crit multiplier that's on this also do make it a great uh, precision kind of weapon uh, and it also does work as a backup as well like I said you're inflicting that toxic as well so I would suggest uh, it's either early to mid or CC 13 to 15 depending on the build that you go for if you go for an assault rifle build Then I think it's early to mid, but if you do also go pick up that extra uh, perk bit that's in uh, Your skills and just go for the one that deals an additional 20% for sniper kind of based uh, rifles um, then it definitely could be 13 to 15 worthy so I think because I could comfortably do a 13 or 14 with this guy, I'm going to put it there. Uh, I'm going to put it just behind the Absolute Zero because I do feel like the Absolute Zero is easier to use. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily make this a bad gun whatsoever. Uh, the Body Snatcher is just terrible. We're just going to put that in Utility Mods. Um, unfortunately, the gun itself, because it being a shotgun and it being a breach version, means you only get three rounds. just doesn't really help at all. The mod itself is very... 
kind of lackluster. It's a great idea on paper, but unfortunately it doesn't really help with the Technomancer. You're already doing like splash damage, you're doing area of effect damage, you don't need anything teleporting to where you've killed things, and especially at long range, um, you don't really need any kind of assistance in killing anything. So the, the Body Snatcher just kind of kind of falls by the wayside, unfortunately, and probably is one of the worst uh, in terms of Technomancer kind of guns that you could use. The Bolton Thunder, um, with its uh, electric that deals uh, area of effect, uh, is nice, but it's a pistol. So we're going to go through the pistols and uh, try and rank them as if they were their own separate class. So obviously, uh, pistols will potentially see hi higher up here. I probably would be the, put the highest to early and mid end game viable. I definitely wouldn't. You you wouldn't want to use a pistol build for God tier or CT thirteen to fifteens. So. Um, the guns themselves don't really have any synergy with the class. The electric doesn't do anything for you. Uh, the pistols themselves, they do the dual pistols, which is great. They have a quite fast rate of fire. They do a little bit of damage, but they don't really do as much as your primary guns. Um, the mod itself is kind of utility in very, very niche situations. Um, so I would probably just put this in a void, no synergy with the class. Um, the pistols themselves, like I said, they do a little bit of damage, but it's not like you're going to be putting your blighted rounds on this, um, and even then you're not going to fall back on these to be able to deal some damage while you're, if you ever need to reload and you're waiting for your rounds to recharge. So they look good, they are legendary, that's about as much as they go for me. So the Damascus Offering is a pretty decent LMG. Uh, it was one of the first that I actually managed to get in this game and I was definitely enjoying all the way up until I found some better guns. So it definitely isn't god tier, uh, but that being said, it's definitely not a bad option. Now it does a bit of a, a area of effect damage with its uh, like uh, claymores that come down and it deals it ac across four, four enemies, I believe, if I remember right. Uh, but it, the damage it does is kind of low compared to like some of the other area of effect mods that we've seen on some of the later guns. So it definitely could do with a buff in that kind of sense, but it's not a bad gun. And it, the, the mag size and the damage uh, and the rate of fire kind of make up for it a little bit. Um, I would probably say this is early to mid game, uh, end game viable, um, just because you can definitely pass with it. Um, it being long range, you can definitely use it, um, and the mod itself is okay. It's there's definitely better ones out there, um, but yeah, I think I think that's a nice place to put it. It definitely has a little bit of synergy with the class. It just doesn't it doesn't make, carry you into the later rounds. Um, as for the darkness charmer, the mod itself is really good. Um, I'm very very pleased with the mod. Um, it, it basically allows it to be a shotgun that can snipe um, on the first shell of every single reload. Now, because it's a reload, um, you don't want to use this with blighted rounds. So it could be a nice little backup, but it also being a shotgun holds it back a little bit. Um, as such, and I don't really want to put all the shotguns in here because um, it, just, it would just seem a little bit unfair for shotguns. Um, I'm going to put it to early to mid end game viable, but definitely more towards the early side. Um, you can definitely get some work done with this. It definitely has a higher damage. It definitely can benefit from the uh, from the toxic rounds and the blighted rounds to be able to deal more damage. And the first round also does a nice bit of damage as well. Um, it just it, there's definitely better options, but I do think this is the better ones out the shotguns we've seen so far. And it's definitely more consistent than the Anomaly FG as well. So I'm going to stick with that. I may have a jig around uh, and think about it as the as the as the tier list goes on. So the Death Shield. Well, it, as as a firepower build, the Death Shield doesn't do as much as other things. Um, it, it overall the shotgun is great. Uh, if we think about it in the large picture of things, the shotgun is great. The mod is amazing. But when it comes to a firepower build, you don't really want to use this. There are much better options out there, uh, namely the Killing Spree and Dark Sacrifice, which we're going to get into. Um, the 43% bonus is very nice, don't get me wrong, and it's very consistent 43%, so it's not like I need to get several kills with the Killing Spree or anything like that, and it's not like it's going to kill me off with the, with the Dark Sacrifice. Um, so it, it, it has its place, but I do think there are better mods out there. That being said, the shotgun itself you don't want to use um, as a Technomancer. Uh, it's just the mod that you're interested in. 
um, and I don't think it's a utility mod. Um, I do think the mod itself will get you to CT13s to 15s, and then you'll be able to pick up that uh, Dark Sacrifice and that Killing Spree to then carry you forward and become a god tier kind of build. So I'm going to put as a combination. Um, as a combination. Because of the gun as well, I can't put it... We're going to put it there. We're going to put it there. Um, the mod itself is definitely up here. Um, but the gun brings it back down to here. And we're looking at a combination of the both. So that's where I'm going to put it. Um, like I said, I may, ever, I may ever think about it as we go through the rest of the list. And I may have a rejig. But yeah, that's where it's going to stay. The Daimyo is a nice SMG. Um, I enjoyed doing the gameplay for that. Um, and the lightning that it summons as well, uh, which is basically the same as the Thunderbird, um, it just has less range for, and a little bit faster fire rate. So I don't think it's as good as the Thunderbird for a Technomancer because obviously we're, we specialize in long range, whereas the SMGs, all of them have pitiful range uh, and we're just interested in just the mod when it gets to that point. So because we have the Thunderbird Assault Rifle, I'm going to put this here. I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it ahead of the pistols. Uh, I'm going to put it there because the Thunderbird will literally outclass it in every way, uh, and it literally has the same mod and it has better range and better damage. So the Thunderbird will go higher up here. The Daimyo itself, for our class, is just going to stay down there. The Disintegrator Revolver. The damage is huge. Uh, the damage is great, but. Because it's a pistol, it also has poor damage. Has poor damage over range. Um, the mod itself is okay, as with most of the pistols that are in this game. None of them really have anything that's like massive or out there or like meta-defining or anything like that. Um, so this one just kind of holds its own. Um, so, but the damage does actually help a little bit. I think. I think this potentially could help you with early end game. I don't think it can help you with mid game. We're just going to go with early. Um, so yeah, so if you are struggling to find any kind of primaries whatsoever when you start uh, early end game, then this pistol could do a little bit of damage for you. It could probably get you through like the first one to three by itself and you never have to worry about running out of ammo or anything like that. But I'd say as soon as you get to like four or five, you need a primary at that point, even if it's just a purple, um, and then you'll be getting like the higher damage numbers and all that kind of thing. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, may even have to split early to mid game. <laughs> it's only just occurred to me. So, but we'll, we'll, we'll look into that as it goes on. Uh, the Enox Blessing. This was a great shotgun to use. Um, I was pleasantly surprised by this, um, and the fact that it heals you as you get killing shots uh, is just is brilliant. I uh, absolutely loved it. The problem is that it doesn't add any damage to your gun. Uh, it doesn't add anything more to you. All it does is force you to get close range and then heal you, which you're already going to be taking a massive amount of damage just from being up close in the first place. And as soon as you get to 13s and 15s, the enemies aren't going to let you get away with that. Um, you'll be do you you'll be taking too much damage to be able to heal off because I believe it's only like about 30 or 33 percent of your health back. Uh, granted, it does heal allies as well, which is great, uh, and I think it then also does factor in how much extra healing you do receive. Um, but overall, it's just kind of it's kind of niche. It doesn't really work with the class at all, um, and the healing itself is because it happens off the enemy that you've killed. Even if you took this mod off and you were trying to use it at long range, you wouldn't even benefit from it at all. So in that case, I'm going to put this in the avoid no synergy with class, but. This being on the record, I did enjoy playing it with it, and I would be interested to see what other firepower builds can actually benefit from this as well. Fatal Symbiont. I think the mod itself has just got to take it to god tier. Um, the gun itself, when I did the video, you got to understand, when I did the video for this uh, initially, and it's obviously it's changed a lot since then because the mod was broken, um, the gun itself was pitiful. Essentially, you were tickling the enemy and you were taking damage for tickling the enemy. Um, and then obviously the enemies were then hurting you and you weren't healing enough to be able to make it viable. Um, I believe the mod, essentially how it worked was when you got under 50%, 
uh, you then got the 75% damage bonus. Um, and that's not how it was intended, and it's now been fixed since that video, typically. Um, so I will need to make a, an updated video to show Technomancers how good this can actually be. But this is now my go-to um, tier 3 mod to be able to put on any gun as a firepower Technomancer. This is the one you want. Um, essentially, because Technomancers can heal... Um, from dealing their own damage it, they don't need killing blows they don't need anything like that they can heal from their own toxic being inflicted on enemies as well um you outweigh the damage you're taking from this mod the only downside you'll have from this is when it goes into like cutscenes um you're still taking damage because you're still in a battle so when the cutscene ends you'll then be at half health which is not great, um, but you can quickly just take advantage of it, pop your rounds on and just fire a couple into the enemies that aren't moving um, and you get yourself back up to full, no problems. It is a consistent 75% damage bonus at all times with this gun mod. Um, like I said, it does take a little bit of micromanaging, you've got to be careful, um, obviously, if you're not hitting anyone, so if they do that yellow protective bubble um, around the enemies and they can still shoot you, you've got to be very careful around that point because obviously you're not dealing any damage, uh, so you're not healing and you're then taking damage from the gun as well as the enemies as they shoot at you. I know it's, I understand it's a very uh, specific situation, but you'd be surprised as to how often it does happen with the elites. So, yeah, this gun by itself is pretty decent. You could probably get mid to CT13 but with an SMG, with this being, even, even an SMG on a Technomancer, you could still do some work with this. It becomes god tier when you dismantle it, you take that and you put it onto another gun. Uh, I have seen a couple of people around the community mention they are using the Amber Vault. Obviously it comes with Killing Spree and then they're putting the second mod as Fatal Symbiont to be able to get an additional 75. So essentially they're buffing their weapon damage by 150% which is huge. Um, but I do feel like the main way that you get around it is with another weapon that's on this list. Which we will probably put ahead of the Fatal Symbiont because the gun and the mod are great. Um, and then because it already has high base damage to then get an additional 75% on that far outweighs that of the Amber Vault and Dark Sacrifice. So, yep, Fatal Symbiont, easy place, god tier, and it's only going to come second place to one other gun on this list. So finally, stay tuned, we're going to find out what that one is. So next up we have the Funeral Pyre Legendary Shotgun. Now, this has a special place in my heart. This will also to overtook the Absolute Zero as my backup gun. Uh, as a way to deal damage while I'm uh, waiting for my rounds to ever reload. Now, fortunately I've got to a point where I don't ever need to do that. Um, I'm quite fortunate that my build actually is able to do that and uh, I don't need to worry about it whether it be CT14s or 15s. Um, but this one was a very nice backup and very complimentary. So essentially how this one worked um, is because it's a shotgun, every single pellet is able to trigger the Shadow Comet Tier 3 perk that's on this, uh, which means that you can summon anywhere between 1 to, I think I've summoned 5 at one point, um, and like, you could probably get more because um, there's definitely more than 5 pellets out that come out of this shotgun, um, 5 comets to come down in a very concentrated area, all dealing about 250k damage each, um, and obviously if every single comet, uh, because it has an area of effect, if it then hits the other ones that were hit with the other comets, all of a sudden you're seeing it go from like 250k to 500 to 750 to 1 million, etc, etc. So you're still able to deal some damage while you wait for your rounds to be able to regen. Uh, and that was essentially how I use this. I would, every three seconds, I'd fire a single shot off just to be able to summon a comet, run away because I know I can't do anything with the shotgun itself, uh, especially without the, my blighted rounds. Uh, and then after three seconds, fire another shot, summon another comet, and then just kill, keep dealing the damage that way. The 250k is, it deals a lot of damage, especially on CT15, it takes a huge chunk of their health away, um, and essentially it allows you to keep killing, obviously a bit slower than you would have done if you kept your blighted rounds, uh, but that's kind of the trade-off, you've, you've, you've kind of made an error, you've mistaken, you've, you, you're going to have to fall back on something, and I do think that this is a great mod to be able to fall back on. Now, the shotgun itself, um, fires way too quickly and has too little damage for it to be useful um, as a blighted rounds kind of gun. Um, the mod itself is great, 
the gun is just holds it back a little bit. Um, you could potentially put Fortress on this to be able to increase the mods damage as well as the guns damage and then obviously put Blighted Rounds and you could probably get away with it a little bit but the fact that it forces you to play close range instead of long range I think holds it back. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in a CT 13 to 15. I do think it's better than the Blight Bearer. I do think it's a utility mod um, but I think the platform that it's on is great anyway. So we're going to put it there. Um, just be mindful that obviously that's how you use the mod. Um, do not use the shotgun itself to try and expect that to uh, get a lot of damage or anything like that. Just primarily use the mod and just abuse it and just take it from there. Uh, the Golem's Limb. This was the first episode that I did. Um, and it, this was when I knew that I really wanted to do all 46 of the weapon tier lists. Um, so the shotgun itself is a pump action shotgun it deals a decent amount of damage um, I think the main thing about it is the tier 3 mod which gives you a huge amount of survivability um, from what I understand it gives you the exact same as emergency stance um, which all of a sudden turns you into a mini devastator um, so you should be uh, like reducing your damage by about 65% I think it is uh, and it also does increase your armor by 10k uh, as we got to see in the video itself. So, um, I don't think the gun's very good for Technomancer. I remember struggling a lot with this gun. Uh, as much as I love how it looks and everything like that, I do think this is a utility mod. I do think it's better than the Body Snatcher, though. Um, I think everything's better than the Body Snatcher. <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, the Golem's Limb uh, definitely has some kind of use. It's very niche. Um, and it looks, like I said, it looks amazing. This was the, like one of the first guns that made me fall in love with this game. So we'll put that there. Um, yeah, we're just going to keep it as a utility mod. Uh, the Grim Marrow is a very interesting looking gun. Um, it's not bad, but the tier 3 mod sometimes doesn't get to pay off. So when you get a killing shot, uh, it summons an orb. You shoot the orb, it deals a huge amount of damage. Now, this is the highest, I believe, uh, damage just purely stated on a mod that you can do in the game. Uh, but because of how a Technomancer works with the toxic rounds already kind of dealing area of effect and wiping out most of the things that are nearby in the first place, you don't really get to see the bubble like go off and deal like a massive amount of damage to enemies that are nearby. So... I think the gun is definitely capable because it's an LMG, so we have a high amount of bullets, we have a decent fire rate, we have decent damage, um, so I'm going to put this early to mid game. It's definitely better than a pistol, it's definitely better than a shotgun, it's, de it's definitely better than the death shield, we'll put it beyond the Damascus because the gun itself is capable but the mod doesn't really do as much as what the Damascus does. So we're going to put it there. I think that's a nice little place to put it. The Headhunter was okay, but was frustrating to use. Um, it definitely has synergy with the class. It's definitely not a utility mod. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend using it unless you're going for a sniper build. Um, and even then, I think there's some better options out there. Uh, I would probably, because of how difficult it was to use, I'm going to put it here. Uh, <laughs> and that's crazy to think that I've actually put a shotgun ahead of it, but I think that purely the Dynast Charmer has a better mod than the Headhunter, and I do think that the Headhunter is just a bit too difficult to use. Um, actually, do you know what? No, I'm going to put it there. Yeah, we're going to put it there. Yeah, it's definitely bad. It's, well, it has some kind of toxic viability doesn't it so it does synergize with the build more than the actual darkness charmer does so yeah we're gonna put it there um the air to the desert assault rifle so all, all assault rifles pretty much are good to use as a technomancer uh the sandstorm that it summons is not bad at all it's definitely visually appealing um does a decent ish amount of damage but there's definitely better options out there um i'd say does it do enough to be CT13? Um, I don't think it does. Um, what other assault rifles do we have? I'm just going to compare it to a few others that are on here. Thunderbird's definitely better than it. It's more consistent. Imploder's uh, kind of pretty good. Juggler's definitely better than it. Um, 
definitely better than the Time Ripper though. So what we'll do is we'll put this at the very end here. I think it needs a little bit extra damage. I think it's on the low side. Um, so you could probably get it to 13 maybe. Um, but you might see it struggle a little bit when it gets to 15. Um, yeah, I thought, I th yeah, I th I'm going to put it like the lower end, saying it is CT13. CT13, 14 worthy. Um, the high roller is horrible uh, to be able to use as a Technomancer. Um, I found that out the hard way. Um, but the mod itself is definitely good and is definitely great for a Technomancer. Because a lot of the guns that the Technomancer use for long range are rifles and sniper rifles, which have a high critical damage multiplier. So, the idea that you can then uh, just kill one enemy, whether it be body shots if you're having trouble, so like beasts or anything like that, uh, or you could just take it into a camp plan and just obviously headshot one enemy, and then you're having a bit of tr trouble with the ones that rush you, like breaches and all that, you can then take advantage of the additional critical shots that you're going to get from the mod. Um, I don't think the gun is useful whatsoever as a Technomancer, but the mod definitely carries it. As such, because it's just purely the mod, I'm going to put it as a utility mod. Um, it's definitely one of the better ones that are out there, but it depends on the gun that you're going to put it on. So if you're looking at uh, anything that has a crit multiplier of 175% and lower, I would say that uh, the Killing Spree or Dark Sacrifice is better. If you're looking for anything that's above that, so like 176 and up, um, Embalmer's Rage definitely comes into its own, and then obviously you'll be doing, you should theoretically be doing some more damage, uh, as long as obviously we're comparing the fact that you can't hit critical shots with the Dark Sacrifice and the Killing Spree. So, it definitely has its niche, but I think it's better for rifles and sniper rifles, and as such, I'm going to put it as a utility mod. Um, if you are, if you do use a firepower build Technomancer and you've gone into rifles, uh, I'm, I'm full disclosure, this is probably one of the better. Uh, mods to find, especially if you do not have Killing Spree on Dark Sacrifice. These would then become interchangeable, and I do think you might have a slightly higher DPS uh, with the Embalmer's Rage than the, the Killing Spree and the Dark Sacrifice. So next up we have the Icarus Legendary Sniper Rifle. Now, this wasn't a terrible gun to use. Um, it was definitely one of the easier sniper rifles to use, but I think that's down to its full auto nature. Um, in terms of damage, it did roughly the same as an assault rifle, so similar to like the Thunderbird or the Absolute Zero. Uh, it just basically had a sniper, a sniper rifle scope on top of it, so it just increased its range, did a bit, a lot more critical hit damage, uh, and the the mod itself was was a nice little DPS boost as well. In terms of uh, viability, it definitely synergizes with the class. I do think that's the case. Um, but I do think it, oh, I don't think it can reach here, uh, and it definitely 100% is not God tier. So we're going to be looking around here, I think in terms of like a combination, I do think it's better than the Death Shield. So we're going to put that there, um, and I think that's probably a safe place to put it, because you can you can definitely abuse the critical multiplier that's on this, you can abuse the scope that's on it, just to be able, it makes it a lot more accurate. Uh, but obviously you need to remember that you need to be able to use this at long range to be able to get the full extent of this. The Imploder was definitely a fun looking gun to be able to use. Um, it's definitely not a utility mod or a gun. Um, it definitely has a bit of synergy with the class because it's a double gun. But it doesn't have that much because it does roll into close range damage instead of long range. Which as a Technomancer you, you kind of want to avoid. Um, as such... I think we're going to put it ahead of the Headhunter. Um, as, as a combination, or due to the mod of the Death Shield, of being Fortress, I do think that holds it above the Imploder. So, but you can definitely get a bit of work done with this gun. Um, so, as a gun, I'd say it's better than the Death Shield, but as a mod, I'd say the Death Shield is miles ahead of what the Imploder can offer. So, we're going to put it there. I think it's a nice little balance for it. You can definitely do early to mid game with this gun. Uh, I just wouldn't carry it into much of the higher kind of tiers than that. And now we've reached the big one. Uh, we have reached the Inferno Seed. Now, as many of you that have watched our videos already know, and as many of you that are in the community and play Technomancer, you know this is a god tier gun. Uh, there, there is no beating this as a legendary gun uh, when paired with either Dark Sacrifice or Killing Spree. This is the gun to look out for. If you can find one, keep hold of it. Uh, I would not recommend dismantling it unless you um, 
how to get a second one, or the only other thing that's there, which obviously is not on this tier list because it's not legendary, is the Earthborn uh, Purple Burst Assault Rifle, which was the DLC in the Hell Hunters uh, or Hell Raiders DLC pack when the game first came out. Now, the obviously that has been patched now, so you can't consistently roll for new uh, higher firepower variants of that gun. So your only other ch chance now, if you don't get a good one, is to go for the Inferno Seed. Um, this one can obviously go all the way up to 99.4k, which will be a god roll, and it will be a god roll of god tier. But just keep in mind, the only difference between the two guns is uh, Inferno Seed rolls with uh, the tier 3 mod works off critical shots, and if the critical shot and the mod that damage that the mod does kills off the enemy, you won't be getting your rounds back. Uh, but it also inflicts uh, burn instead of bleed, which is the bone shrapnel. So the the Earthborn is a bit more consistent with the fact that it works off of killing shots. So it doesn't affect your ability to be able to get uh, the rounds back. Uh, and it also inflicts bleed, which bleed seems to be generically like better overall in terms of like uh, like rounds based skills. You don't have anything for fire to be able to regen rounds back into your gun, whereas you do with bleed if you do go for vampiric mag. Uh, and yeah, so. They're kind of like at ends with each other, uh, but this is the legendary variant basically as far as I can tell So Inferno Seed is the gun to look out for uh, If you're going to worry about anything else that's on this list, that's the one that you need to worry about So pair that with either of these two mods and you are good to go. That is your build right there So now we've reached the halfway point I just want to go over and just explain that, uh, just get, just a brief reminder that if we can hit that 200 sub, uh, sub goal, then we will be able to do a giveaway as the channel because we are looking to grow, we're looking to be able to get ourselves out there and be able to make this the best community and the best channel that we could possibly bring to you. So if we can get there, there will definitely be some giveaways, just keep yourself, uh, keep yourself posted on our YouTube, keep an eye out for our Facebook and our Twitter links and also there is a Discord link in the description, feel free to click on there and we'll definitely be posting it there as well so make sure you keep yourself posted and just keep an eye out on all of those so next up we have the landlubber legendary bolt action sniper rifle now in terms of like ridiculousness in scope uh, this definitely is god tier uh in terms of um the rest of the gun it's definitely strong it's a bolt action it has huge damage it has a great critical multiplier and the mod itself is great it's kind of like a uh, mini like shadow comet and it does like it does bombs everywhere uh, the bombs concentrate around the main target you've hit and because it goes off critical shots the bolt the bombs can then uh, fall down and the, they deal damage around and they will be able to potentially kill the main target that was first as such I don't think this is great for a uh, blighted rounds kind of to be able to put onto. Uh, I do think the mod is great. I definitely had it paired on my absolute zero at one point, so I would freeze an enemy in place, with the, hit them constantly with the critical shots, and then just watch the bombs fall around them, and it will detonate onto the main target, as well as any enemies that are nearby. Um, I think because, depending on, if, if, the, if you're going for a rifle kind of base build, this would be a great kind of backup. Um, and this would help deal so much more damage. Um, I just don't think... Do you know what? I think it can do 13 to 15 if you've got the right build. Um, yeah, I'm going to put it as head, head of the air to the desert. Um, the mod, like I said, the mods was my main backup for doing 13 to 15 anyway. So I, I think with just mod alone, this can do it. Um, in terms of the rifle, it's definitely strong. It's definitely useful. It could probably make you do 13 to 15. Um, probably more 13 or 14. Um, I don't, th I don't think I would trust carrying it into a 15. Um, just by itself, but that being said, there's definitely going to be some kind of builds out there that can definitely do that. The Lucky Revolver, I think, is better than the Disintegrator. Um, it's, a, it's a revolver as well. Um, the mod is, I think, is better. Uh, and this, this has only just occurred to me now that the, um, the damage that this uh, the, the mod does uh, is based off your initial weapon's damage. So I think if you took that mod and you put it onto like a rifle or a shotgun that already has like a, a high base damage in the first place, you're then dealing even more damage with your critical shots and the mod just bouncing the bullets around. So I'd say it's better than Disintegrator. I, I, I can definitely probably do an early to mid uh, end game using my Blighted Rounds on this gun. Um, and I'd, I'd probably even look forward to doing it as well. Maybe, maybe that's the... Uh, 
some of the next videos that I need to do and just show off the pistols and how far can we actually get with them before we start struggling like what is it all the way from CT1 to CT15 how far can we go before this becomes a problem and maybe that's a, that's a way to do, show some of the videos as well and um, the Lucky Jinx is a great gun um, it's definitely up there in terms of double guns this is this is one that you need to look out for because this inflicts toxic uh, as such, I don't think it because it already inflicts toxic, it's not going to be great for the, the mod doesn't really synergize with the, the blighted rounds itself, but it can definitely make work as a backup weapon. And I do think this is going to be one of your better backup weapons uh, to be able to carry into. Now, because I find this easier to use than the blight bearer, I'm going to put it ahead there. Uh, even though they both inflict toxic, I think this one's your better chance and it's definitely more uh, user friendly because of its full auto nature. So I definitely put that one there. So next up we have the Master Tool, and this one was, a great, if I remember right, this was a great video to make. I was actually pleasantly surprised as to how much damage this can output. Um, this is a sharpshooter variant of an AR, so it's single shot only. Um, the mod itself is great as more as a utility, to be honest with you. Um, just because it stops bullets uh, hitting you, it just stops them dead in their tracks and then they just fall to the floor. Um, it protects you, but it doesn't really have any use when it comes to the beast kind of levels. So you will primarily ever use this gun uh, for its mod on things like chem plants, on Boomtown, those kind of things, which are very popular in the community because they are one of the quickest ones to run. Um, in terms of like beast levels, so your uh, arch archways, uh, and all that kind of thing. Um, Scorchlands, I think it was, is the other one. Um, you wouldn't want to use this because the dome literally does nothing. Um, the gun is great because of its high damage, uh, because of its high critical multiplier, but I think the mod just becomes a utility. Um, as such, I'm going to put it there. I do think because these, well, this one offers damage and this one takes way more people out of the action allows you to be a bit more aggressive. I think this one being a defensive kind of thing is better than the golem's limb, um, but the dome is definitely a good mod to use, especially if you're struggling for survivability uh, and only on those kind of levels, whereas humans uh, or humanoids kind of shooting guns at you. The mind mugget is fun. Um, I don't think it's a great mod, um, which is a shame. But it really, really intrigues me. Um, there, there's a lot of things about games where RNG uh, is brought into a game that's not based on RNG. Uh, and I, I find that a lot of fun. There's something about it being random and it being out of your control that just makes it more fun. Uh, it doesn't make it competitive, but makes it a lot more fun. Um, and this being a sniper rifle as well, kind of does help with the build a little bit. Um, you can't go wrong with it. The, st the stuff that it actually does um, kind of inflict that um, kind of affects it. So things like um, you're going from your toxic rounds and then next thing you know, you've inflicted them with ash so they can't move or freeze, which then obviously plays into your build itself. There's other things as well, which obviously can be inflicted and it will probably work really, really well with a status power kind of build. Uh, unfortunately, this is not one of those builds we're talking about. So it doesn't really help. Um, is it a no synergy with the class? Do you know what? I'm going to put it there. I, th I think that's the case. I mean, it, it, the gun does a bit of damage. It's not like it fails in comparison or anything like that. The mod literally does nothing for the go because your only real focus is toxic, which you already inflict, and freeze, which you already choose when to inflict. So why would you want something that's a bit random about that? You, you, you just wouldn't. So as such, I'm going to leave that one in the no synergy with class. It's still fun to pick up, it's still fun to mess around, but if you're going for a competitive firepower Technomancer build, I would just leave this one in the stash. The Molten Eye Dola is a brilliant gun. Um, I absolutely love this gun. Uh, it has a huge uh, high damage potential, it has a massive critical multiplier. The only thing that holds it back is the fact that it only has one shot in the magazine. Now. If you've gone for your correct firepower build and you've gone like full top tree for your Technomancer, this will actually go to two shots per magazine. Um, as such, I think this is one of the best rifles to use and you don't even need to specialize into rifles to be able to get it to do, like, do high DPS or anything like that, but it would help. Uh, as such, 
I'm going to put it behind the Umber Vault. The mod itself is kind of negligible. You don't really go for it for the mod, but it is a brilliant weapon platform to be able to put something like Dark Sacrifice or Killing Spree, preferably Dark Sacrifice because obviously trying to get three kills um, will involve a reload. So if you have Dark Sacrifice on there, you're already bumped it up by 75%. Uh, and then the crit multiplier on top of that, you're going to reach stupid numbers with this gun. So as such, I think this is going to be one of the better guns. Um, it's not, not as good as the Inferno Seed. It's not as consistent. But if you do fancy some kind of accuracy kind of build or anything like that or rifle build, this is your main go-to. Uh, and I would highly recommend that you go pick this up. Going from that to the Rarog's Gaze, Rarog's Gaze is definitely a good, great gun as well. Um, as such, it's definitely 13 to 15 worthy. Um, you would, If you put your blighted rounds on this gun, you will see a huge uh, DPS, you'll see some high numbers being better released, and the fact it inflicts weakness to enemies as well, which means that it's going to help with your survivability on top of that. Uh, I believe it's also a blast as well, so it does a little bit of damage, and then you can put something like Killing Spree or Dark Sacrifice on there just to be able to increase it further. Embalmer's Rage would also do a massive amount for it as well, because it also has a high crit multiplier, um, and any of these three will do huge uh, for this and I do think it's one of the better rifles and possibly the best rifle outside of the Molten Eye Dialogue but it's definitely one of the ones that's got the higher magazine capacity as well as that. The Roaring Umbra is very very difficult to use um, at least with its mod. The, the gun itself is okay the mod itself is pointless um, the idea that it gives you uh, kind of like a stomp, which uh, is very, very similar to that of an armor mod that you can get, which pulsates every single six seconds, I believe it is, um, which doesn't require you to hit anyone. But also as a technomancer, you're shooting at long range anyway, or you should be, which means that no one's going to be nearby to you. It makes the, the, the mod pretty much garbage. As such, the, you kind of have to rely on the gun itself. But the gun itself is then similar to that of a purple one so it's not really legendary as far as technomancers are concerned um, so it definitely isn't a utility mod um, it doesn't really have any synergy um, that being said it is a gun that can be used for early to mid end game but I don't really think it's similar to like the daimyo the daimyo it can be used but it just no, it has no synergy um, you can still like get through expeditions like 100% you can get through things uh, you can definitely get gold with them as well but in terms of like all these other choices, these are much better, um, and as such, I do think the Roaring Umber just kind of falls, uh, kind of falls flat on that. And uh, the Shell Rock's Excrescence um, is kind of similar, but it deals damage on top of it, um, so it, it makes it better than the Umbra in that kind of sense. Um, I don't th the mod doesn't do anything for the class. Um, it pretty much does absolutely nothing for te Technos, but. The gun still holds up, and the fact that the mod still does some damage on top of that, I think actually can make it early to end game. Uh, it's definitely not not a case of no synergy whatsoever, because you are still dealing damage, you're still using long range, um, and it was definitely usable. And uh, in in the videos, I actually managed to get quite a decent footage with this, um, but I don't think because it doesn't like do anything. I just mm, maybe I actually do move it down. Yeah, we'll put it there. Um, <coughs> it literally has no synergy, um, apart from the fact it just deals a little bit of extra damage over time. So, yeah, we'll keep it there. Well, that's, that's probably the best place to put it. So, next we've got is the Spirit Hunter, which takes the Bone Shrapnel mod and uh, makes it even better and just goes with critical shots instead of killing shots. Now, <clears throat> I remember having difficulty because this is a sniper rifle, uh, and the scope did not work uh, as well as I wanted it to. It wasn't a terrible gun, uh, but it's definitely not great. So, what we'll do is we will pop that straight into there. There's not much more I can say about it, really, that hasn't already been said in the video. So, if you've watched the videos, uh, there will be links of every single one of these thumbnails down in the comment section below, um, and just get yourself over there. See which one that you obviously want. You'll probably want to aim for, aim for these top two kind of categories and just have a view and just see how they kind of like perform and how they look. Uh, but the Spirit Hunter is it's viable, it's long range, it does bleed, uh, it does explosions. That's about it, really. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely one of the lower ones that you want for early to mid game. Uh, 
The bulwark is... Nah, what are we talking about? It's a, it's a, it's a no synergy. Um, <clears throat> it's a great gun. I like the idea of the gun. Um, and it's definitely one of the first few legendaries you pick up because you realise that it's in Tiago's shop and you work your way towards it. And this was the one of the main ways to be able to get Vampiric Mag 2 uh, proc because this was the most reliable way to inflict bleed onto an enemy, kill them, and then you get 50% of your magazine, uh, magazine back. So, but... As players, we've evolved from there. We, we, we no longer need to require on that. Uh, other classes do, but as a Technomancer, we primarily use Toxic Lead. Um, so we have literally no need for bleed. Uh, as such, um, do you know what? I'm going to put it behind the Enoch's Blessing. The Enoch's Blessing has higher damage and heals and uh, gives it some more utility over this. Um, yeah. <coughs> In fact, actually, do you know what? We're going to put... We're going to put the Enoch's Blessing there. Um, just because you, you can, at long range, you could potentially heal like a Trickster or a Devastator class while they're uh, up in the face of enemies. So actually, it does have a bit of utility. So we'll put that there, actually. And the Iceberg is a great gun. Uh, it is one of my favorites from the demo. Uh, inflicts freeze in a massive area, which is great utility. It's better than probably the... Um, time rift or whatever it is that's on the airy master uh, lifting them up into the air you inflict extra damage to frozen enemies this is overall is it the mod itself is brilliant the sniper rifle itself is pretty good as well uh, but it kind of is the mod that holds this one up um, as such I'm gonna put this in 13 to 15 worthy I think because and I think it's better than the land lover in that sense because of the extra damage that you can deal um, but it, it's because of the scope, it's not as easy to use as the Blight Bearer. Um, so, yeah, we'll put it there. Um, it's definitely worthwhile picking up. You can definitely do, say, 14 to 15s with either this gun or this mod. Um, it's, it's just that good. That's the thing. The Juggler was one of my favourites. Uh, and is definitely a great backup gun. Uh, the only problem is that the Scrap Grenade holds it back. Because if it, when, it, when it works, when it, when it procs, it's... It's golden. It's basically one of the best you can find. You can find this is this is your thing. Um, but when it's uh, just kind of just just I, d I don't understand why it doesn't work. Why 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 it sometimes bugs out and it just doesn't work. Um, essentially, if if you do certain actions before like a cutscene or anything, or like or it just decides that it just wants to have a lie in or something like that, then the the scrap grenade mod won't proc. It won't fire anything out. Uh, and it just becomes a standard AR at that point with literally no tier 3 mod whatsoever. That being said, when it does work, and the fact that you can restock it with toxic lead, and then because it's the first bullet of a magazine it can fire another grenade, um, is great. It's a huge DPS boost and is actually probably a great target for, uh, your, for, your, for your blighted rounds basically, uh, and, and for your build overall. Now, like I said, it just, it, it's hit and miss, it depends on whether the, the mod's going to work for you or not. Um, and then obviously if you don't have a nice backup to be able to use your blighted rounds for if it doesn't work Then you kind of get a little bit screwed over by that fact um, the d damage it puts out is solid the The overall stats of it being an assault rifle is brilliant um, And it's definitely one of the better ones out there as such. I'm gonna put that there um, I do think It could push into god tier I think if, if, the, if the mod had some consistency to it where it literally never failed it could push into god tier um but like behind all of these it could be like a low god tier um but as such it's 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 the best 13 to 15 worthy guns um so it's definitely not worth it's definitely worth picking up if you get a, get a high firepower one from tiago um but yeah just just keep in mind that the mod might fail on you um, as as like a side note, because of how often you reload the Molten Idola, if you if you weren't interested in using like Killing Spree or Dark Sacrifice or Embalmer's Rage, or whether you just don't have those in the first place, you can always just scrap one of these in, uh, put the tier three mod onto this, and because of how often you'll be reloading this one shot rifle, um, the, your next bullet will then fire another grenade out of it and all that kind of thing. So it actually does help with dealing a little bit of extra damage as well on top of that. The Animoir is a great shotgun. There's no denying in terms of the community that the Animoir, with its Moaning Winds per mod, is just god tier. But that only it becomes god tier when you're a close range kind of specialist. Now, as a Technomancer, we're not interested in doing that. 
Uh, it's probably a nice little fallback weapon, uh, especially if you can put Fortress on it to be able to bump up the Moaning Winds damage. Um, but even then, as a Technomancer, you still should not be getting up that close to be able to use this weapon to its fullest of extent. Uh, as such, um, I think just purely for the fact that it's not long range, we could probably get away with putting it in early to mid, um, where the damage in, damage numbers aren't that much. In fact, actually, doesn't really have any synergy with the class. Uh, do you know what? We're gonna we're gonna put it uh, there. Do you know what? That's that's a tricky one. That's that's gonna hurt. Um, yeah, as a backup weapon, where it, it literally has no synergy with the class whatsoever. You do, you do not want to be getting up close for using the shotgun, and you do not want to be getting up close to be able to use Moaning Winds. It, that, that's not me saying that this is trash. That's not me saying that the mod is terrible. Uh, it's just purely based on the fact that Technomancer should not be getting up close, so you should not be using this, especially as a firepower Technomancer. So I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to stick by my guns. I'm going to leave that one there. I think that's best there. Um, that being said, there might be some other Technomancer builds that we're going to look at where this could still pay off. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, same with the guillotine. Uh, the guillotine literally has no synergy with the class. Uh, it's basically like a weaker version of the animoir, uh, except the shotgun by like, bullets itself do do more damage. Um, so as such, we're going to put it above the pistols, because the gun itself can still do a lot of damage, but the reload mechanic goes against everything that you need to do as a firepower um Technomancer, and you shouldn't be using this as a backup either because the the damage that it deals as a reload mechanic is pitiful compared to that of Moaning Winds, and all it does is inflict a status, and that's it. And then you, that's 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 your gun done. That's your backup. So, no, would, would avoid uh, literally no synergy, especially if the animal is going to be here. So we're down to the last eight, uh, and this is already looking like a pretty good list from what I can see. So next up we have the migraine, the legendary SMG. Now. Because it's an SMG, it suffers. The aesthetics of this gun disgust me. It is genuinely the It's horrible to witness, and it looks like it should just be squelching every single time it's in your hand. The uh, the killing mod that's on it for the tier 3 uh, does a nice bit of damage, but I don't feel like it does enough uh, to be able to justify the SMG. Um, it could probably get away with it in early to end game. I think this is, this is an SMG you could probably do something with. Um, we put the Daimyo in, in a void, no synergy. Oh, that's purely based on the Thunderbird. So, yeah, in that case, we're going to put that there. Um, it's still better than a pistol, um, but it, it, it doesn't have the range that a Technomancer needs. It does have a little bit of damage output, and then the mod itself does a bit of damage on top of that. It just doesn't do enough by itself to be able to justify taking it out um, and definitely going into those higher tier ones. Um, like I said, you can still get some work done. Just don't be surprised when it starts falling down and you, you, you're struggling when you get to those later higher tier kind of challenge tiers as well. The Reaper is kind of in the same boat. Um, the gun itself is pretty solid. Um, the tier, the, the tier 3 mod it has is okay. It doesn't really do anything to add to your class or anything like that. It just kind of is there. It doesn't increase its own damage. It doesn't do anything to the enemies as such really. Uh, just inflicts a single status and then that's it. That's you done. Uh, which you can inflict with just one bullet. So why do you need like a massive, massive clip size on this? Uh, as such, you can definitely do some work with it. Because it's an LMG, it has better range than the SMG. So I'm going to put it above the migraine. Uh, but... Once again, this is one of those that you don't expect it to push into uh, higher challenge tiers with this. It's just not going to pay off with it. The Wicker is a strange case because Ash is debilitating. Um, and it, do, it does allow you to do a little bit extra if you do have a Pyromancer teammate. The fact it frees away, it, it, to make shift freeze or it does Ash, uh, stops the enemy in its tracks. Uh, and just keeps them there, and it can affect, I believe it can inflict onto elites as well, which is a great, great, great call. Um, but it, being an SMG, it does hold it back again. Um, as such, I can't say it has any synergy with the class. Um, it definitely does more than like the shotguns and the pistols and all that kind of thing, uh, but I don't think it does enough as a gun, as a mod, to be able to justify taking it into any of the 
challenge tiers at all. Uh, that being said, if you do have some drop pod resources uh, that's left over and you're looking for uh, potentially a backup that can freeze people in place or anything like that, it can definitely be used. Uh, it's just not top tier. It's not. It's not the best option that's out there. Definitely better ones there. So now we get onto the Thunderbird. Uh, Thunderbird is great. Uh, being an AR, it has range, has damage, uh, it's full auto, uh, has accuracy, deals additional damage every single second, uh, it's visually appealing to be able to use, it's it's great. Um, as such, it's definitely better than the Air to the Desert, it's definitely going to be 13 to 15 worthy. Um, but the mod itself doesn't synergize with the class similar like the Absolute Zero. So I'm gonna put this there. I think it's better than Land Lubber. Um, it's more consistent. It activate it doesn't activate on critical shots. It's an assault rifle, so it's easier to use. I think this is gonna be, yeah. I think that's a nice little place to put it. The Time Ripper, on the other hand, being an AR, uh, just inflicts slow, um, which the the AR stats itself keep it keep it going. It has nice range and all that kind of thing. The like standard everything that I've just talked about with the Thunderbird. The only problem is that it doesn't have a mod that increases deals any extra damage or increase your damage as you use it. So it just inflicts slow. It's more of a crowd control, um, just built into an AR. So it just makes it easier just to be able to whittle away a single target, in my opinion. Uh, as such, I would probably put it in this early to mid game. I'm going to put it above the Headhunter. Uh, I don't. Th the imploder already does extra damage. Um, it already does a decent amount of damage by itself in the first place. So yeah, I'm going to put it there. I'm going to put it above uh, the top. Yeah, no, that, that's a nice place. The torment and agony are pistols. I was quite surprised as to the damage output these were able to deal. Um, so I do think these are as good, if not better than the Bolt and Thunder or maybe like just slightly under the revolvers. Uh, it does, doesn't does punish you as much for when you miss shots. Um, and the, the, the tier 3 mod that's on it is just awkward to use. Um, it, it's a reloading mechanic so you don't want to use it primarily on uh, a firepower Technomancer uh, or especially definitely not with the Blighted Rounds. But it has a decent amount of damage over range. I was quite surprised to it. The only problem is that the tier 3 mod makes you want to reload, it makes you want to mark up a bunch of enemies and then expect it to do something, and it just doesn't. Um, so as such, I'm going to put it... Ooh, that's a hard one. Because it does something. Now, do you know what? It, it, the, the other pistols do something, they just, yeah, they just weren't as good. So we're going to put it there, we're going to put it in the no synergy. Um, they're just nice to look at, I wouldn't rely on these whatsoever, uh, just to be able to even get you through any kind of... You, these guns can get you through challenge tiers. Just don't expect them to get you through to mid tiers or anything by themselves. I just, I, nah. The Twisted Mercy is great. Um, as a rifle, it already is great just due to the fact that it's, it benefits from long range damage. Um, and also the fact that um, it's accurate, it has no scope, so it's a bit easier to use than the sniper rifles. Um, has a great crit multiplier, all, the, all that nice stuff. Um, in terms of the mod, it doesn't help you out a fat lot, really. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it uh, above the air to the desert, but before the yeah, not quite landlubber kind of kind of area. It's a great gun, high damage, and if you know how to use it and you're specialized, you, you want to go into kind of a rifle. It's definitely better than the air to the desert, uh, and that's my stance. And then this leaves me with my personal favorite, which is the Voodoo Matchmaker. Now. I can't say it's god tier. As much as I want to say it's god tier, I can't. Um, the tier 3 mod that's on this allows you to share more damage between enemies, which is great, and as a Technomancer is a nice little bonus, um, because your Blighted Rounds already do that just by themselves. The This just adds a little bit of more damage and a bit more consistency to the fact that you're then killing uh, so many enemies that are nearby. It's a great way of crowd control. It's a great way of just relying on the splash damage that comes with the Blighted Rounds. Uh, and I do think it's just a great gun overall. It's it's accurate, it's consistent, it's got great range, it's got good damage, it's got all the good things that you want for it. Uh, as such, because this is more reliable than the juggler, but it's got all the stats of the juggler, I'm going to put it above that. Um, I, th I think that's, yeah, I think that's correct. 
So all I've done is just change one of the categories from avoid because I don't really want to suggest that you avoid any of these guns. Uh, I think that's the best, that's a terrible way to put it. But I do want to just kind of establish that they literally has no synergy with the class. So there's definitely better options out there, but these are still usable. Uh, just they're kind of like the low tier of this gunner guide um, and I think that pretty much wraps it up um, I think this is pretty much the definitive list if you want to go for firepower but if you have any suggestions or if you have any kind of like comments to suggest why, why I've potentially put something in the wrong category just put something down in the comment section below I'll have a read of them we'll have a discussion about it uh, and we'll see if we can kind of agree um, as such remember that as soon as we hit 200 subs we'll be doing some kind of giveaway and just make yourself uh, make sure that you're following us on all those social platforms just to be able to keep an eye out for it um, i hope you've enjoyed uh, i hope keep yourself safe keep yourself well and i'll see you on that next video